Hi, I'm Jackie McLean. I write the D.I. Donna Davenport crime series and I'm going to chat to you a wee bit about the series, um, what the books are about um, and something about the, the process of writing and some of the, the research that went into to writing the series. Um, I hope you've been enjoying Book Week Scotland. Uh, things are a little bit different um, this year. Obviously all the events are online um, instead of face to face. Um, so I'm recording this um, from, from my writing desk. Um, but I'm not entirely on my own. I do have some helpers with me today. Um, you'll have seen from the title um, at the beginning there that um, I'm accompanied by some furry friends. Um, I'll introduce you to those shortly. But in the meantime, let's have a wee chat about the books. On the morning of December the 4th, 1984, municipal workers in Bhopal, India, were clearing some 4,000 dead bodies and thousands of animal carcasses from the streets following the world's worst industrial accident. The toxic cloud that caused the massive death toll formed when water poured into a tank of improperly stored MIC. It doesn't look dangerous, and you can't smell it until it's too late. You can only hope it isn't sitting around anywhere near you. That's the premise of um, the first book in my D.I. Donna Davenport series, Toxic. Um, in Toxic, police receive an anonymous tip-off that MIC, deadly toxin, is being illegally stored um, in, in the area and it's set in and around Ardroth and Dundee. Um, so MIC has been smuggled into the country and it's been stored under the radar. Um, because this stuff's so dangerous, um, the police are racing against the clock um, to find out where it is. The smugglers um, who are responsible for bringing MIC into the country um, obviously don't want to get caught. This is a lucrative trade for them and they'll go to any lengths um, to, to stop being um, found out and discovered. Um, they hatch a series of blackmail plots which fail um, and they, they carry out a, a trail of murder um, which also fails to stop the police investigation. Um, and eventually they're backed into a corner and there's an ultimatum and I'll leave you to read Toxic for yourself um, to find out what happens there. Um, one of the things I will say about Toxic is that the MIC, um, this, this toxin that's the subject of the storyline, is real. MIC is real stuff. It was the um, substance that was responsible for the Bhopal disaster in 1984. Um, and like I said at the, at the snippet at the beginning, um, it's the world's worst industrial accident. Thousands upon thousands of people lost their lives in one night in Bhopal. And since then, tens, hundreds of thousands more have suffered the consequences because the ground was never um, decontaminated. To this day, 36 years on, the Bhopal plant remains um, not properly sealed off. Children play in its grounds. Um, they drink its contaminated water sources. Um, and the people of Bhopal have never, ever received justice for what happened to them. Um, and that was one of the things that I grew to feel very strongly about when I was doing the research for Toxic. Um, so as a result of it, um, I became involved with the, the Bhopal Medical Appeal. Um, so if you have a read at Toxic and you want to know more about the background to Bhopal and what happened there, please do go online and look for the Bhopal Medical Appeal. Um, in the meantime, um, I mentioned um, the Furry Friends. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one of which is Finn, our dog, and I'm going to ask Finn what did he think of Toxic. Oh, anything Toxic sounds good to me. Can I eat it now? Okay, how like a dog thinks through its stomach. That was Finn.
Shadows is the second book in the D.I. Donna Davenport series and in Shadows um, the opening scene is um, a body is washed up on Arbroath Beach and the police um, have to determine was this an accident or not um, and chiefly the, the role of the, the forensic investigation um, is to help the police understand um, did this person fall into the water before or after they were dead. Um, and it's actually, when I was doing some research into um, the forensics of drowning, um, I was really surprised to discover that it's it's not a straightforward um, question to answer. Um, I always thought it was quite a straightforward matter of um, if there is water found in the lungs, um, then they must have drowned because they must have been breathing before they went in the water. Um, if there's no water in the lungs, they were dead before they went into the water. But actually that's 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 too simplistic, it's not quite as, as straightforward as that. Um, so some, some of the research into that was, was quite gruesomely fascinating, as, as crime fiction research often is. Um, so the police have to find out, um, was this an accident or not? Was it, was it a murder or not? Um, but before they get very far with that investigation, um, Donna starts to realise that um, there's a lot of similarities with a previous murder. Um, and then a third person goes missing, um, and so they they're really up against it. They have to they have to find this missing person before they become the next murder victim. And the storyline becomes very personal to Donna because the the missing woman um, is her best friend's mother, so it, it becomes very personal. Um, and the search, um, the search and the investigation takes them across to Turkey. Um, and, and partly I wanted to set um, some of the storyline in Turkey because it's, it's a part of the world that I know well um, and I've set it in an area of Turkey that I know particularly well, that I'm very fond of um, and it has a particularly fascinating history that lends itself to the type of um, storyline that's in Shadows. Um, I'll read just a wee snippet from the blurb um, in the back of the book. So, fearing they may be looking for a serial killer, Donna and her new team are taken in a horrifying and unexpected direction because it's not a serial killer, it's worse. Let you have a read at Shadows for yourself to find out um, what that's all about. Um, now one thing I'll say about Shadows at this point is there's, there's a dilemma in the book. Um, I take us to the, the main perpetrator um, of the, the crimes in the storyline and we see his explanation from his point of view of why he does the things that he does and again there's no straightforward easy answer to whether he's right or he's wrong um, in what he's doing um, when you take into account a lot of the context that he operates in um, you might think you know which is worse for him to do the things that he's done or for him to not do any of it it's, it's not that straightforward and I, and I do like to throw in a dilemma, a grey area into my crime fiction. Um, so have a read, um, have a think about some of the, the grey areas in the book um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of that. In the meantime, we'll go back to the, the point about drowning because we do have an expert in the household um, on all things to do with water and that's Angelica. Um, so we're going to pop over to speak to Angelica and ask her what she thought about shadows. That sounds fishy to me. I'll let you in on a secret. We like to keep our distance from Angelica. She is actually the chief suspect um, in a number of disappearances of her tank mates that we're currently investigating. Run is the third book in the D.I. Donna Davenport series um, and the storyline follows on from the events in Toxic and Shadows and it sees um, Donna's team really up to their eyeballs, um, tying off the loose ends from Toxic and following up the complex um, international nature of the investigations um, from Shadows. 
when there's a murder of a local thug, um, and they really they really can't be bothered investigating this. They, they see it as a waste of their time. Um, but a series of, of events soon follows on that are tied to the murder and, and they soon realise there's something bigger at play. A little bit from the blurb at the back of the book. As more and more incidents overload the police and fear brings vigilante mobs onto the streets, suspicion grows that the mayhem is being orchestrated. Um, and it is being orchestrated. This is a story of revenge. Um, and Donna um, uses like-for-like -like tactics um, really to, to fight that revenge and um, to try and achieve justice at the end of the book. Does she do that? Have a read for yourself and you'll find out what she does and what happens. Um, that's run. Now, um, another member of the household um, knows a thing or two about running um, and is very keen on running, so I thought I would ask her about her um, thoughts on run. This is Michelle the Tortoise. Now, Michelle's a bit of a celebrity in her own right, so you know we, we treat her as royalty in the house. Um, Michelle, what did you think about run? Run! 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 Michelle was getting a bit carried away there. Um, that was her thoughts on, on run and running. Um, at the beginning of Run, um, the opening scene, the opening murder there is um, the murder of a local thug, um, like I mentioned, but it takes place in our Broth Football Club. Um, and I like to include the club in my storylines because I'm a bit of a supporter. Um, so I wanted to have um, the opening murder at the football club um, in this third book. Um, so I decided I better um, contact the club just to check that they're okay with that because not everywhere is that keen on being associated with murder. Um, so I got in touch with them and explained what I was doing and they were delighted. Um, they've, they've been tremendous about um, my whole writing journey, they've been a great support. Um, and they suggested why don't I make the murder victim the referee. Um, so I did that and then I thought, do you know, the guy who gets murdered who's now a referee, um, he's he's a bad guy, he's got a police record, um, quite serious stuff, and, and, I, and I wasn't sure if he would be allowed to be a referee in real life, so I contacted the SFA, the Scottish Football Association, um, and asked them about um, the background to, to being a referee, and, and I explained to them about my character. Um, so I asked him, would, would he be allowed to be a referee in real life? And they said, oh yeah. Um, so I'm going to show you a clip of um, a reading that I did at a previous Noir at the Bar in Edinburgh and it's from this, um, the murder scene at the football club um, and the storyline that the clip runs into was when I was, I was telling the audience about the story about the referee. Um, so here's a wee clip of reading from Run. We referee said, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. We're about to join DI Donna Davenport um, when she attends the murder scene at the football club. The body lay the length of the office floor on its front and in a pool of blood around the head area. His feet were closest to the door. Donna's eyes took in the worn black trainers, the black socks and shorts, the bright yellow top with black trim and blood-stained shoulders. The grey face lying side on with its grey eyes staring at the opposite wall. And the wooden handled axe planted firmly into the back of his shockingly crimson skull. She glanced at the surrounding walls and saw there wasn't an awful lot of blood splatter up there. Archie McInnes is dead, she thought, leaning in to take a closer look at the all too familiar face. The world was a better place. <laughs> She caught the look that passed between Dexter and Corrington and wondered if she'd said it out loud. It's not that it mattered, she was pretty sure they were thinking the same thing. Don't waste your time trying to find out who killed the useless fucker came out of a woman's voice. There'll be a queue a mile long. Donna flinched, as much in annoyance as in surprise, that someone else was here at the murder scene. The newly widowed Agnes McInnes stood in a corner of the office, staring at her husband's cleaved head with her arms folded firmly across her bosom and an expression on her face that could stop a train in its tracks. <laughs> <laughs> there is a queue a mile long, said Donna, picturing the 780 fans who'd been at the game. Agnes drew a cigarette from her pocket and went for her lighter, 
Put that away, said Donna. This is a crime scene. She turned to Dexter. What the hell is she still doing in here anyway? There were too many McInnesses in here, even if one of them was dead. <laughs> Get her out of here. Dexter mumbled. Brings back fond memories watching a clip like that. Um, the crime writing community is actually very sociable and, and very supportive um, together. And do you know, before uh, lockdown and before the COVID restrictions, we we all met up lots of different events. Um, and Noir at the Bar Edinburgh was always one of my favourite events in the, the crime fiction calendar. Um, and I, I can't wait for um, that to return for real again um, once restrictions are, are all over. Um, hopefully in the not too many months um, in the future to come. Um, so really looking forward to getting back um, alongside everyone involved in, in the crime fiction community. Um, in the meantime though, um, we are all, all good at, at keeping in touch online, but it's, it's not quite the same, is it? Um, so now we're going to just have a, a, a thought for the, the, the day on the whole series um, from our cat Soxie. Um, I asked Soxy, what did she think about the D.I. Don of Davenport series? Um, do you know, because cats are thoughtful animals, um, intelligent animals. Um, so I, I thought Soxy would have, a, have something, in, you know, insightful to tell us about the series. What did you think, Soxy? <sighs> so like a cat. Um, before I finish up, um, I, the one thing I'd like to talk about a little bit about research that goes into crime fiction. Um, it's actually one of my favourite aspects of writing is, is doing the research for a book. Um, and, you know, crime fiction research can get you into quite a bit of trouble and I'm not alone amongst um, crime writers in, in fearing um, our internet searches being intercepted one day um, because I think we would all look like a very dodgy crowd for some of the things that we, we search for and, and look into. Um, but I'm, about, I'm going to show you a clip um, from a piece of research that I did um, for Shadows a while back. Um, part of the storyline in Shadows involves um, guys with guns, um, and, I, and I don't know anything about guns at all. Um, so I had to do quite a bit of research for that. And I went up to an armoury um, and did some practice shooting and got shown how, how guns work, how to take them apart, what, what's all about them. Um, so I'll show you this clip, um, which is me being uh, not 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 super suave with a gun at all. Um, it was very scary. But here's a wee clip. Maybe make you chuckle. Finger on the trigger, straight arm, and then pull it all the way back. I don't hold your ears. I said, tell you what, put your other hand forward on it as well because that's you're tilting over an angle. Like that. so that's it. So there you go. And pull it all the way back. Big pull. <laughs> that wasn't very cool, was it? <laughs> um, on a more um, serious note, um, that, that trip to the armoury where I held the guns for myself, fired the bullets for myself and became very aware of just how powerful and how devastating and destructive um, guns are. Um, it really taught me a lot about um, the, the need to really not glamorise guns and shooting and to not glamorise um, a, a lot of the, the violence that, that does happen in crime fiction. Um, crime fiction, where it mirrors what actually happens in society, sometimes has to be, has to go to those places where there's, there's violence um, and we really need to take care not to glamorise that. Um, and myself, in common with, with a lot of crime writers, um, we like to use our writing to address some of the issues that we care about in society and to address some of the violence that goes on and to try and make sense of some of it and to try and deal with some of it on the page um, and to help us, us think through some of the issues behind um, what goes on and to raise awareness of, of certain social issues and, and injustices that go on. Um, and the big example for me was the whole injustice about the, the Bhopal disaster that, that I've been keen to, to raise awareness of through my writing. Um, so social issues in crime fiction are really important um, and that the the time, the trip that I went to the, the armoury um, to fire the guns really taught me a lot about um, just how, how awful guns are. Oh, I'm, I'm getting nudged by Michelle here. Michelle wants to say something else. 
What's that, Michelle? Come on, hurry up and do the next one. Michelle's always rushing about. Um, well, what's next um, on the cards for me? Um, so I've written three books in the D.I. Donna Davenport series and it, it really is it's a trilogy because there's an overarching storyline that begins in Toxic and is, is resolved gradually um, towards the end of, of Run. Um, so it, 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 that's, that storyline, that trilogy came to a natural end, but that doesn't mean that it's an end to Donna Davenport. We've got plenty more um, ideas in mind for, for her series. But in the meantime, I have begun a brand new series, which is set in Glasgow. And this one features um, Detective Inspector Morgan O'Malley, who heads up a vigilante crimes unit. Um, so I'm working on that series at the moment um, and hopefully I'll have some news for you about that before too long. Um, in the meantime, I'd love to know what you think of um, Toxic Shadows and Run. Um, I'm always happy to chat with folk. Um, join me online on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is JackieJamXX and I very rarely remember what it is when people ask me, so I'm really pleased that I remembered just now. So join me on Twitter, chat to me, give me your thoughts on some of the issues that are raised in the Donna Davenport series, um, and enjoy the rest of Book Week Scotland. On the morning of December the 4th, 1984, municipal workers in Bhopal, India, were clearing some 4,000 dead bodies and thousands of animal carcasses from the streets, following the world's worst industrial accident. The toxic cloud that created the massive death toll formed when water poured into a tank of improperly stored ice... <laughs>